Nvidia recently launched the GeForce 9800 GT, a refresh of the 8800 GT, offering the same performance but with the addition of hybrid power support when paired with supporting Nvidia iGP boards. More importantly though, the 9800 GT brings decent on paper performance with a very reasonable price tag, making it a promising value-oriented product. Inno3D has seen the potential of the 9800 GPU and with its iChill edition, looks to make it even more attractive by adding an uprated cooler and increased clock speeds across the board. But do these changes really add value or compromise the value proposition by overly inflating the price? Card Appearance Inno3D's GeForce 9800 GT iChill clearly doesn't follow the reference design. The most obvious difference is the use of an operator cooler, Arta Cooling's Accelero Twin Turbo, which should keep temperatures and noise levels low. Additionally, Inno3D has raised the clock speeds over the reference design, with the core jumping from the reference 600MHz to 700MHz, a 16.66% increase, and the 512MB of GDDR3 increased from 1800MHz to 2000MHz, which is an 11.1% increase. The 112 shaders clock remains unchanged over the reference design, running at 1500MHz however. The rear of the card looks pretty plain. The most significant feature to note is the single SLI connector, allowing two-card SLI. Viewing directly from the side, the depth of the cooler becomes apparent, and you should expect three expansion slots to be occupied when installed. A single six-pin PCIe power connector is required to power the card, lending pictorial weight to its mid-range characteristics. Two gold-plated dual-link DVI ports and a TV out provide display connections. Component, composite and VGA outputs are available using the bundled adapters. The Bundle The bundle comes with most of the adapters you could want, although a DVI to HDMI adapter would have been a welcome addition. The inclusion of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon 2 is a good addition if you don't already own the game, and it should provide a good demo of the card's power. The Benchmarks as comparisons for the Inno3D 9800 GT iChill, we're looking at the reference clock 9800 GT, its big brother the 9800 GTX Plus, and the ATI Radeon HD 4850, all of which are available for under £130, including VAT. In Company of Heroes Opposing Fronts, Inno3D's GeForce 9800 GT iChill edition provides a 7.7% increase over the reference design at 1680, and 1050, and a 6.8% increase at 1920 by 1200. Good solid increases. However, it still falls comfortably behind the performance of the GeForce 9800 GTX Plus and the Radeon HD 4850, which are derived from better architectures and are on a pretty even footing. Enemy territory, Quake Wars. The Inno3D GeForce 9800 GT iChill matches the performance of the more expensive Radeon HD 4850 at lower resolutions, but doesn't scale quite as well when the hertz is increased. Again, though the iChill branded 9800 GT receives a decent boost over the reference design, we reckon it's helped by enemy territory's love of memory bandwidth. Call of Duty 4 ATI cards show an advantage over their Nvidia rivals with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, with the HD 4850 proving king of the hill. Banging on a consistent theme, the 9800 GT iChill proves roughly 9% faster than the reference 9800 GT, but around 12% slower than the 9800 GTX Plus. Kind of what we'd expect, knowing the frequencies and the architecture. Grid. Race driver grid appears to be an ATI benefit, but performance for the Nvidia cards isn't bad. Very smooth at 1680 by 1050, but a little sticky at 1920 by 1200 for the Inno 3D contender temperature testing and overclocking. The Arctic Cooling Twin Turbo manages to keep the Inno3D 9800 GT iChill nice and cool during testing, offering the lowest ambient to low delta of the tested cards. The card lives up to its name, huh? The Radeon HD 4850 looks incredibly toasty compared to its rivals, the single slot cooler prioritizing quieter operation over lower temperatures. We managed to raise the iChill's frequencies to a maximum stable overclock of 738 MHz core, 1782 MHz shader, and 2214 MHz memory. These represent overclocks of 5.4% on the core, 18.8% on the shaders, and 10.7% on the memory, all over the already pre-overclocked speeds. 
Looking back at the ETQW test at 1920 by 1200, we see that the iChill card at its shipping clock scored an average of 49.9 frames per second. When overclocked, this rose to 55.43 frames per second, which pushes performance close to the reference 9800 GTX Plus. That's not too surprising, considering similar core and memory speeds. Bang for buck. The Inno 3D 9800 GT iChill, priced at £110 or so, suffers in comparison to the reference Palette 9800 GT, which is a snip at £82.83. But when other reference 9800 GTs cost up to £100 at price, it's not unreasonable once one considers the operator cooler, bundled game, and pre-overclocked performance. The £130 LeadTech GeForce 9800 GTX Plus seems a better bet, though knowing that the reference dual slot cooler itself offers pretty substantial cooling performance and low noise operation, whilst the card has the benefit of being based on the full fat G92 core with 128 shaders and increased clock speeds rather than the cut down core found in the GT. In our opinion then, the additional £20 would be money well spent. However, the undisputed Hexus bang for buck champion is PowerColor's HD4850, offering similar levels of performance to the GeForce 9800 GTX Plus at the lower price of around £115. Conclusion. As with many pre-overclocked cards, the value proposition suffers in comparison to the cheapest available reference designs, yet Inno 3D has kept the price quite reasonable, especially when some reference-based cards are only slightly less expensive. However, at its current price level, it's too close to the higher performing Radeon HD 4850 and the GeForce 9800 GTX Plus to warrant serious consideration to punters after pure performance. We like manufacturers who do something different, and iChill's decent bundle, quiet operation, and damn cool looks go some way to appeasing the price-related problems. Not the fastest card you can buy at £110, sure, but the iChill has a well-rounded package that deserves consideration if your needs aren't purely related to frame rate performance.